We are four days away from the Christmas holidays and not really seeing much snow in the forecast. We'll take a look at those details a little bit later. Madden Julian phase shifting into phase seven during the holidays. That's usually associated with a reduction in the warm anomaly east of the Rockies. So maybe a pattern change coming up later in the month. Looking at the surface analysis for this afternoon, we are in between major systems. One off the northeast coast, that'll be affecting Nova Scotia and Newfoundland this weekend. Cold air flowing in the backside of that. Temperatures in the 20s and 30s in the northeast. We also have ridging extending down from Manitoba into the Great Plains. However, on the high plains, some very warm conditions, temperatures in the 50s and 60s, all the way from Colorado into Montana. Looking at the weather in the northern hemisphere, we are in a seven wave pattern that favors a very progressive movement of all these different waves. Looking at short wavelengths, none of those very large carved out troughs, usually when we have those going things tend to slow down or even retrogress. So these waves will be coming through with great regularity. The storm track coming right off the Pacific and that's going to actually keep us in somewhat of a El Nino type of pattern even though technically it is neutral. And just a quick look at the upper air energy. A lot of energy heading off the northeast coast. Trough moving on off into the Atlantic, but on the backside, one wave descending down through the Great Lakes and another through the Dakotas. And let's see what happens with those going into tomorrow and tomorrow afternoon. This wave will be moving through Tennessee. The other waves in the northeastern U.S. pretty much shearing out and leaving this large upper low across Quebec. Ridging starts building in from the Rockies, and here comes another system onshore in California and Oregon. And it'll move across the northern Rockies this weekend and into the northern plains by Sunday night and Monday. And you can see we've got many other waves moving in. This one on Tuesday, digging in and affecting Texas and Oklahoma. And yet another digging a trough for Thursday and Friday. So we're looking at a busy period coming up here for the next week. In the Northeast, a lot of weather problems as moisture has wrapped around the backside of this system. If we run this forward, you can kind of see the main warm conveyor belt moving out to sea, convective elements well offshore, but a lot of residual clouds on the backside. We've got winter weather advisories for late tonight through Boston and Providence. Looking for about two to four inches there. Also in the Poconos, northeastern Pennsylvania, one to three inches. That'll cause problems on Interstate 80 and Interstate 380. Winter weather advisories in the snowbelt areas, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie. That runs through tonight due to strong northerly flow. Amounts roughly about five inches in the exposed area of the lakes, maybe six to eight southwest of Syracuse. You can see that snow extends well towards the Pennsylvania border. Further south, snow problems all through the Appalachians into the Blue Ridge Mountains. There could be some totals around 8 to 10 inches in eastern West Virginia and snow all the way down into Tennessee and North Carolina. They have winter weather advisories there as well. In that part of the country, they're under a cold air advection. Temperatures this afternoon ranging from the low 40s in Tennessee to 56 in Atlanta and all the way up to 81 at Miami. We do have a freeze watch out for Saturday night in southeastern Georgia and down towards Waycross and Lake City. Temperatures could be down to 30. And we've got lake wind advisories from Augusta to Columbia that runs through this evening and there could be some winds up to 30 miles an hour before that all shuts down. In the southern plains, not very much to talk about. Under fair skies, temperatures ranging from 37 at Wichita to 69 at San Antonio and Houston as well. 
We do have cold air advection in that region as well, but it is a very dry air mass. We only pick up the moisture further to the east around Memphis and Nashville. Looking much better across the northern plains, a weaker Alberta clipper tracking down that thermal boundary. Bitterly cold conditions once again in eastern North Dakota and Minnesota. Highs today below zero around Pembina and five degrees at Grand Forks, located about right there. Environment Canada looking for zero up at Winnipeg, just off the map. 18 degrees at Minneapolis, 15 at Bismarck, and 17 at Sioux Falls. So that's some very cold air there. As you go south, though, warms up to 32, actually 34 at Chicago, and 26 at Omaha. Further west, the high plains remain quite warm. As we mentioned, 50s from Cheyenne to Billings and Great Falls, and 62 this afternoon at Denver. High wind warning continues on the higher elevations of southeast Wyoming between Cheyenne and Laramie. West winds could gust to 60 miles an hour, and that's helping to drive that downslope flow, helping to produce some of that warming through that part of the country. Looking at the southwestern states, a lot of fair weather. Temperatures in the low 80s around Phoenix, 78 at Los Angeles, much colder in the San Joaquin Valley, we've got trapped cold air there with fog and highs are only supposed to be in the 50s and lower 60s. The Pacific systems are starting to line up out to the west. We're going to see very strong southerly flow start to come together off of California and Oregon. All of the beaches up and down the California coast, they will become hazardous by late Saturday Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday due to high surf and rip currents. There will be large breaking waves 8 to 12 feet in Southern California and as high as 25 feet on the Central California coast. And as you go further north, there's going to be a risk of sneaker waves. Those can definitely be a hazard. Down close to the waterline, the waves can come in and completely inundate you in less than 5 to 10 seconds. Wind advisory has just been issued for the northern Sierras, including Lake Tahoe and Reno, for tomorrow. South winds gusting to 50 miles per hour. Mild weather across the northwestern U.S. We're looking at 40s this afternoon in the Great Basin area. 50s around Portland and Seattle and close to 60 along the Pacific coast. But that intense southerly flow will be picking up. At 850 millibars, we're showing 50 knots along the coast near Eureka and 75 knots out over the ocean. And that rivals some of the low-level jets we see in the Great Plains in the springtime. High surf and rip currents will be a problem there as well. Oregon up to Washington, waves up to 24 feet with sneaker waves there as well. There will be wind advisories in southwestern Oregon, Lakeview, all tourists, they're looking for gusts up to 50 miles an hour this weekend. And there we go. Now you have the big, comprehensive overall view about what's happening. So, yeah, cold air in the northern plains and very mild conditions in the Rockies. Let's take a look at that on the cross sections. All right, so we have an east-west cross section. This goes through Chicago, located about right there. We also cross through Cheyenne, right there near the Front Range, and there's the Rockies. So we're kind of cutting right through that cold front, right there on the High Plains. The warmer air located right there, and this pile of isentropes, potential temperature lines, that's indicating where the cold air mass is located. The core of the cold air right there on the Great Plains. And we see the other side, the cold front, off the map out there in the Atlantic right there. We see the jet stream above all of that. The jet stream loves those sloped surfaces because that indicates a temperature gradient in the horizontal. And it's not just that cold air in the Midwest. There's a lot of cold air aloft over the northeastern states, and that's helping to support this jet across the Great Lakes. 
And we can also do a north-south transversal. There's all that cold air in North Dakota, and it kind of tapers off as you go south into Oklahoma and Texas. Basically the same air mass, but just weakens in the strength of that cold air. Aloft, there's a frontal inversion, and we gradually transition into the regular air mass above that cold air. So there you go. That's the summary of what's happening in the U.S. Let's head out into the Pacific, and yeah, we do have a major system off of Oregon and California that'll be coming inland during the weekend. Then as we head north into Alaska, you notice the pressures are really not all that high, only 10, 16 millibars. The normal sea level pressure is 10, 13 millibars. So this is some very abnormally low pressure for that part of the continent. However, there is cold air in the interior. Temperatures about minus 16 northwest of Fairbanks. However, this cold air is just not really going to go anywhere with pressures being that low. So we don't have to worry about any cold air coming south in the near term. Lots of high pressure on tap all the way from Quebec into the prairies. And some very cold temperatures as well. Much of Manitoba below zero. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at that forecast, starting out with the current conditions. The northeastern U.S. system heading out into the Atlantic, but coming in from the west. Major Pacific system arriving sometime around dawn in Oregon and northern California. So that'll bring some very heavy rain and gusty conditions. For Saturday itself, we are looking at a frigid weekend across the Great Lakes area, temperatures in the teens across Wisconsin and northern Michigan. We are looking at 20s all the way from Portland, Poughkeepsie, and Pittsburgh for Saturday, and even colder on Sunday. Focusing again on the northwestern U.S., there will be a modest atmospheric river looking at IVTs about 500 to 700. The tail end will be dragging into northern California and we probably will see some winter warnings in the Sierras but the snow levels will probably be on the high side. Precipitable waters running about half an inch to one inch and very little of that atmospheric river left by evening. Then we go into Sunday. It is going to be bitterly cold in the northeastern U.S. Highs in the single digits in the mountains. Teens from Albany to Scranton and Binghamton. Some areas further south will not get above freezing, including New York City, Philadelphia, and the western district of Columbia metro area. The lake effect snows, however, begin shutting down completely as the center of that anticyclone moves across the eastern Great Lakes. A big warm-up in Texas as that southerly flow gets established. Temperatures will be coming up close to the 70s in many areas. However, we do have that potent upper air trough moving into the Dakotas and Nebraska by evening. Stagnant weather continues for Arizona and New Mexico. However, conditions going downhill in the Great Basin area, and here comes atmospheric river number two, the very same areas coastal Washington, Oregon, and California, IVT is about 500 to 700. Snow levels will be running about 5,000 in the northern Cascades and 7,000 all the way down towards the Sierras. And as we go into Monday, the Weather Prediction Center does have a marginal risk of excessive rainfall on the Oregon coast and down into much of northwestern California. Temperatures will be rising into the 70s in Texas for Monday as that southerly flow continues. And we're looking at pretty good rain chances all through the middle Mississippi River Valley into Oklahoma, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and East Texas. Here comes atmospheric river number three, sweeping through the western states on Christmas Eve. Strong trough will be digging into Texas from the Central Rockies, the strongest lift out in East Texas by evening. This will combine with a modest low-level jet extending from East Texas to Arkansas and Missouri, intersecting that warm front there in Arkansas. Then we go into Christmas. Well, the only snow that I'm seeing is in Utah, Nevada, Idaho, and the Four Corners. Strong cold air advection in the wake of this Pacific system. 
and some of that snow will be spreading into Colorado as well during the afternoon and evening. Atmospheric River number four grazing the west coast. This is yet another big trough that will focus mostly on California and Nevada. There it is right there. That will cross once again into the southern states. This is, yeah, pretty much like a El Nino type pattern. And then we go into Friday, atmospheric river number five. So yet again, more rain and snow for the coastal regions and the Cascades. IVT is about 300 to 500. And we get to the end of the sequence. You can focus on your favorite area. Looks a little bit colder going into Monday the 30th and towards New Year's Day. And I guess we can take a quick look at this. You can look at Canada. And I'm not really seeing any intense anticyclogenesis up north to really drive that Arctic air down south. We need pressures up there in the 1040 to 1050 millibar range. So even up there in Canada, it looks like they're being dominated by a northern stream carrying some remnants of these Pacific systems into the Canadian interior. But towards the end, look at those thickness values really start to come down there in Alaska. This might be a sign of a change coming in from the northwest as we get to the end of that sequence. Now we've got pressures building to 1040 millibars. And unfortunately, that's going to be the last chart that I have right there. But that is starting to look a little bit more like something that would bring cold air southward. In fact, there's the leading edge right there of that new Arctic air mass. Here's a look at how the temperatures are stacking up up there in Canada. This is going to be current conditions. That aqua is minus 10 to minus 20. And one little sliver of air close to zero extending into North Dakota. So we go forward in time. There goes that coastal low through the Maritimes, producing some snow and heavy rain. Then we get into next week. Not much to look at, but what we're going to focus on is Alaska, Yukon, and the Beaufort Sea area. And we're going to see that Arctic air start to generate as we get towards the very last days of 2024. And there it is, a very large area of minus 30s to minus 40s in the Alaskan interior. And of course, that's going to spread into Yukon. There it is right there. And we get the start of that 1040 millibar high. And this is going to be possibly the start of an Arctic outbreak, at least into Western and Central Canada, and maybe into the remainder of the US. We'll have to see about that. And that's all for your Friday edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you very much to our valuable Patreon supporters, Michael Hyman, Matthew Jeannot, Brian Haggerty, and David Rice. Thank you very much for those bumps in your Patreon support. Very much appreciated. All right, we'll be back here on Monday the 23rd for the supporters and probably on Christmas the 25th for everybody else. It might run just a little bit late on Christmas, but we'll see how it goes. All right, have a great weekend and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.